Hiyakum to a new episode of Mr. Mwater. Today's episode is different. I'm not filming some fancy supercar or something very luxurious. I'm filming my own personal car, my daily driver. I've owned this car since 2019, 2020, and I've had it for three, four years, and I've done over 70,000 kilometers. So in today's episode, I thought I'd show you my car, I'd show you what I've done and changed on it, and my honest opinion after all these years of ownership. When I bought this car, it was sold out. I had no choice in terms of color or gearbox. I just took whatever was available. Uh, I had to wait for five months to take delivery. And until today, if you go to the dealership and make an order, you're gonna have to wait for like three, four months to get your car. Uh, even though this is like three or four years old, uh, since its launch, nothing has changed. No facelift has been revealed. Nothing is in the making. And the car is super basic. Uh, in some countries, it's banned from how basic it is. It lacks some of the safety standards, I guess. And it doesn't meet those requirements in certain countries. I believe in Europe, it's no longer available. You only can buy it as an industrial vehicle and not a private vehicle. I think this is due to the airbags in the car. It has one and a half airbags maybe. <laughs> and uh, the only thing that's changed since it was launched in 2019 is the production country. This started as being produced and assembled in Japan. It then moved on to India being assembled there. And now it's back being assembled in Japan again. Also something else that has happened with the car is the dealer has increased the price. This has gone up almost three or four thousand dollars since it was launched. This is just a markup from the dealership. Now the car, as you can see, it's very small, it's tiny, it's very basic. It's like one meter by two meters. So it's very simple. And that's what drew my attention to it when it was first launched and revealed. I really like how basic and simple it is. And it's very boxy. And to counter that and to make it look a little bit more interesting and more, let's say, muscular on the road, I've done a few tweaks here and there for performance and for aesthetics as well. Now, the first thing you're gonna notice are the rims. I've changed the rims on the car, American Racing. Those give a huge offset, 19 millimeters. I'm not sure the exact figure, but this allows me to have the wheels spaced out without having to use actual spacers. There are no spacers on the car, just the offset from the rims. And those rims are lighter than the factory rims. So you get less unsprung weight on the tires and wheels. And this is important because the car is not powerful. It's very weak. The engine is very small, 1.5 liters only. Aside from the rims, the tires are also changed. These are 235s BF Goodrich Trail Terrain, which is the best combination for use on road and off road. And with this setup, the stance has changed significantly. It looks much wider, uh, much more aggressive. And something that has aided with it being more aggressive is the rear bumper. I've also changed the rear bumper. This is narrower than the original factory bumper it has. These are the Japanese bumper. I think they have a smaller Jimny over there without the flared uh, fenders. So this is the Japanese bumper. It shows the tires more. And if you go underneath the car, you're gonna see I have these yellow shocks. I've also changed the shock absorbers in the car. This is not for uh, aesthetics, this is for performance. And I'm gonna talk to you about them later. I haven't changed or replaced the springs. I've kept the factory springs, uh, but I've added like spacers to the shocks to increase the ride height by almost one inch. This is more than enough as the car from the factory it has more than enough ground clearance, as you can see. And with the bigger tire setup, this added also some ground clearance. So this setup, I feel, is ideal for the Jimny. Uh, the shocks are Dobinson shocks, and they're yellow in color. And that's why I've decided to make the Suzuki uh, logo in the front also yellow in color, to tie up everything together. Now, this has been replaced. This is not the factory one. This has like bigger uh, ventilation in the front. It gives it a nicer look as opposed to the split uh, grill setup. And I've added also these lights with the light bar. Uh, they are also helpful at night. And the bumper, just like the bumper behind, this is also replaced. And this is also the smaller one. So uh, it comes to show the tire more. You can see more of the wheels at the front. 
Uh, now in terms of interior, everything I've done here is almost cosmetic. Uh, the only thing I've done for comfort is I've custom made this armrest. The car doesn't come with an armrest, so I made this uh, cushion in the center with, which fits uh, snug between the seats and it never moves. This is like three years old and it's very comfortable. Otherwise, I've changed some colors of some bits, tied up with the exterior. The seat belts are now yellow. Uh, the AC vents are yellow as well, and then the central area I've added yellow touches. They are all color matched to match the exterior. And I think it gave it like a refresh from the inside. And since it's mostly plastic, so it, ne it needed these uh, additional colors. Now I've added a cup holder over here. Car doesn't come, it comes with cup holders, but they are placed under the armrest. So I had to improvise and add a cup holder in this spot. And I've also added the storage tray at the top, which is uh, very useful for storing stuff and for holding your phone in front of you while you're driving. So you can see your navigation and everything ahead of you. Everything like you've seen is simple. Everything is basic. Everything is plastic. Now this has its advantages. The first advantage is heat. Uh, this country is very hot. It gets really hot. But the advantage is as soon as you switch on the car and drive for a bit, it cools down really fast because you don't have like leather or metal materials that store the heat. Everything is plastic and fabric. So heat dissipation is very good. The second advantage of being this simple is the ease of maintaining and replacing parts. Would you believe it if I told you this car has been in a rollover? Probably not, yeah? You're gonna scroll back probably and have a look at the exterior again to check. But the entire roof has been replaced, plug and play. They have removed it at the dealership and put a new roof on the car. They have also replaced some of the doors. They have fixed some of the panels. So fixing the car was very easy. Now what made it easier is the airbags didn't pop. Why is that? Because I have a kill switch for the airbags. From factory, those are all dead buttons, but at the moment, those are for the front new lights. And this is the kill switch. This is connected to the fuse box of the car. So if I switch it on and I click on this button, everything disconnects. You will see on the gauges, traction control, ABS, airbags, everything is disconnected. And this is the ideal setup for off-road driving. And while we're at it, here's the current mileage of the car, 73,000 kilometers. And this is the outside temperature. And before going for a spin, the last thing I remembered I changed is the horn or the honk of the car. Uh, from factory, it sounds uh, cheap. I've put something that sounds more, uh, more luxurious. So people would actually pay attention on the road and not bully this car. Now, I'm sure a few of you are going to be curious to see what the car looked like after the rollover. I'm going to link the video in Arabic down in the description so you can have a look at the aftermath of the rollover. There was a lot of concern when the new Jimny came out about the air conditioned system uh, in the vehicle, especially uh, during the summer. However, I can uh, guarantee that uh, it has been running well. So how have the mods I've done to the car changed the way it drives? Now from factory, it drives good. Uh, obviously the engine is small. It's a 1.5 liter only, uh, 110 horsepower perhaps. And uh, it's not the fastest car, it's slow. It takes like 12 seconds to 100. Uh, with the bigger uh, wheel and tire setup, you lose some of the top speed. So at the upper end, you feel you lose like 5 kph, which is fine as the car has gained performance off-roading in the desert. Now with the suspension setup, this is something I wish I've done from day one. Uh, I've waited like two years before I've done any uh, modifications to the suspension system and the Dobinson shocks shocked me by how good they were. Not only on the street, now the, the ride on the street becomes a little bit harsh, but it absorbs the shocks much better off-roading. In the desert, it's a much smoother ride. It, it's softer now under very strong bumps and undulations. This wider tire allows for easier and better deflation i usually go down to like 5 psi and the way the tire opens up on the sand gives you a lot more traction a lot more grip on the sand 
most of the off-roading I've done in this car is on the sand. So uh, you can understand why my setup is designed for that. One of the strengths of the Jimny is ground clearance. Because of the very short wheelbase, because of the very short overhangs, front and rear, you get awesome clearance. It's probably similar to the Jeeps, or if not better than the Jeep Wrangler. The only thing I would change or I would make different is the gearbox. Unfortunately, when I bought this car, the only available option was the automatic gearbox. I didn't find the manual, it was another like one or two months of waiting time so i was in a rush and i took the automatic the automatic is a four speed the manual is a five speed so the manual is the one to go for especially if you do off-road driving desert driving the automatic lacks torque sometimes and uh, on steep inclines or steep slopes you feel the car dies faster than those that are manually equipped i've done many trips with other owners who have uh, the manual transmission and it was obvious that the manual performs much better off-road of course this is the more comfortable road driving vehicle but uh, when i bought it still cruise control wasn't being offered by the dealer the seating position is great in the Jimny. it's very comfortable it suits my posture and my back very well many people complain about the seats for me the seats are perfect the only thing I would uh, perhaps wish they change is the steering wheel. It's not telescoping, it's fixed. So you have to keep your arms extended if you're tall. If you're short, you're going to be closer to it, which is fine. But for the taller people, you can't get it close enough from you. Some of the drawbacks of the car is first noise insulation. There's no noise insulation. It's very noisy in here. And people, there's Bluetooth, so people speaking to you on the phone will think you're swimming underwater when you're speaking to them it's very noisy also the wind affects the car significantly on the highway i find myself sometimes chasing bigger vehicles just to get some more aerodynamic from them and the rpm is high on the highway so it's best under 110 kph anything over 110 and the rpm is really high it gets noisy Fuel consumption gets uh, impeded and it's not comfortable at all over 110. So I find myself uh, cruising on the highway at 100, 110 maximum. Fuel consumption, if you're driving uh, with reason and if you're driving on the street between city and highway, you can achieve like 10 kilometers per uh, liter, which is fine. Uh, the gas tank is 40 liters only. So you get mileage of around uh, 400 kilometers. The only concern I would bring to your attention if you're considering buying this vehicle is safety. Uh, this is not the safest car to be in. Uh, it's very small, it's very tight. You are very close from the door and from the window. So God forbid you are in an accident, it won't be uh, pretty. Now the car, in my opinion, handles well for what it is. Uh, the small size makes it nimble so you can make like sharp turns and everything flies around and with the wider uh, setup the wider tires the firmer suspension uh, handling and traction is good is decent and now on higher speed speed bumps suspension absorbs it much better so you don't have to slow down as much what do i think of the car overall if time goes back, would I still purchase it? Definitely, yes. I've really enjoyed the car. I've learned a lot driving it, especially off-road. And it's a good car to learn. It's a very good starting point. But I've reached a point where I feel I need to advance now. I need to get something a little bit more aggressive. So something might be coming up. Stay tuned for that. Uh, thank you for watching. Let me know what you guys think. See you in the future episodes.